I'm a little bit TO'd right now, okay? I, I'm not the kind of person that usually does videos getting heated about things, but this is a little frustrating when science gets sort of threatened or misinterpreted, okay? Maybe you've heard of people doing the sugar diet lately, okay? That's one section of the discussion which we'll talk about in a second. But then with the sugar diet, there's people saying that low carb or keto caused insulin resistance or is causing insulin resistance or maybe even caused insulin resistance in them. And I'm not anybody to say, hey, this didn't happen to you and invalidate someone's experience. So, I mean, I don't know everyone's details, so I don't want to comment on that. But I do know where science is getting misinterpreted and where it's getting spun in a weird way. So this sugar diet thing is, there's actually scientific merit to it. I'm not doing it. Okay, don't worry. I'm not, I mean, I'll experiment with it. I have before, actually. I've done fruit fast. I've done juice fast. That's a real thing. There's, there's mechanisms behind what works with the sugar diet. So like, I'm not even here to negate that. Okay, if you want to do it, that's, that's totally cool and it might even work. Where I have a problem is that people that have jumped over to the sugar diet are saying, I'm doing a sugar diet because I have to reverse what keto did to me as far as insulin resistance. Okay, I did videos on this for years, but unfortunately it's like things that the algorithm doesn't always catch. Low carb will cause a peripheral insulin resistance, also known as an adaptive glucose intolerance, and it does that because the body doesn't see a need for insulin, so it downregulates insulin receptor substrates in the cell and makes it so that when you do have carbs, your body's sort of like, oh, this is unnecessary. We don't have the machinery for it because you've been giving it fats and it's upregulated the machinery to use fats, which is what everyone wanted a few years ago, right? And there's still huge benefit to that. That's where I'm getting frustrated is that we're misinterpreting that. That's not pathological insulin resistance. It's exactly why so many people in the, the, the low carb space would catch crap from people when we would talk about, hey, occasionally have honey or occasionally have carbs. Why? Because you want to make sure you maintain your glucose tolerance. It wasn't like, so I would do videos every once in a while and be like, yeah, I'm going to have some carbs. Well, then you're not really doing keto. Well, we don't have to put this label on keto where if I ever have carbs and I'm not a true keto person, there's lots of people that would do that. It's really important to do it because you maintain glucose tolerance. Now, what's interesting is that the evidence suggests that it only takes a few weeks for your body to reverse that peripheral insulin resistance that's happening only at the muscular level, not at the pancreatic or deeper level. And then it goes right back to normal. If you don't use it, you lose it. Okay, whether you are doing low carb or whether you are doing sugar fasting, I think it's good to periodically dip your toe in the other water because you need to condition your cells to occasionally use each fuel. But instead, we're gonna go extreme and extreme, extreme and extreme. My friends, if we occasionally dip our toe in each other's water, sounds funny, we can get a lot out of it. Okay, honey used to be my jam, like when I was low carb. I would just occasionally have like a couple tablespoons of honey and just get a nice little bolus after a workout or intro workout or something like that. That was it for me. Or I would have some berries or some fruit or I'd occasionally have a refeed day. Okay, quick side note on honey, by the way, I recommend you guys use Manuka honey if you can, because that way you can have a much smaller amount of it and you don't have to like have a whole lot to get like the antioxidant effect too. I uh, put a link down below for the one that I recommend nowadays. It's called Manukora. They weren't around as much when I was doing super low carb. I wish they were because it has a very high MGO content. So that link down below gets you a starter pack, $25 off of it. So it's a 850 MGO honey tub. It's five travel stick packs, a wooden spoon, and a guide on how to use it. You literally only need a teaspoon or two of it. So it's really, really easy to use and you don't have to have a high amount of carb to get the antioxidant effect. It's harvested in New Zealand. Every single batch, you can trace back to the actual batch and the harvest. So that link down below, definitely recommend you check them out. Whether you're doing low carb or if you are doing a sugar fasting type thing, like honey would probably be one of the best literal things you could have. Let's talk about sugar fast for a second. In case you haven't heard about this thing that's sweeping the nation, sugar fasting is where you keep your protein super, super, super low and you keep your fats very, very low and you just go high, high carbohydrate, predominantly sugar. People are getting shredded on it and people are actually saying it's improving their HbA1c. 
But if you look at the comments, you look at the people that are doing this, you've got a large amount of people that are having success, but you also have a lot of people that are not. Okay, so it's not a cure-all. And I think it can be used as a short-term intervention. The idea behind it is that when you reduce your fats and you reduce your protein and you increase your carbs, the cells have no choice but to start learning to develop the machinery to use carbs again. But there's also these other mechanisms like FGF21 that send people into overdrive. You get a lot of energy and you can burn a lot of fat. Okay, that doesn't mean that it's here to stay forever. Okay, that being said, the reason I have a primary beef with everything that's happening right now is not because of the sugar diet and it's not because of low carb. It's because people are seeing this and they're saying, I am doing this sugar diet because of insulin resistance caused by low carb. The same thing that is making the sugar diet work is the same thing that made low carb work, which is the body developing efficiencies and upregulating transport mechanisms for whatever fuel is predominantly being used. So can you impact insulin resistance with high carb? Yes, you can positively influence it sometimes, but insulin resistance was not caused by the absence of carbohydrates or by high fat, it was caused by the fact that it's peripheral and your body is trying to develop a system. Now again, I can't speak to anyone's unique situation, right? There are situations, everyone is an individual. Where the evidence is really strong is actually in high fat and high carb causing insulin resistance. So high fat intake on its own in isolation does not seem to cause insulin resistance. Right? We see that in Dr. Walter Longo's work. As a matter of fact, it's actually helpful. Okay, But he's keeping fats high, protein low, and carbs low. Right? Okay, Then you have the other side of the equation where fats are low and carbs are high, not usually a big cause of insulin resistance. Where we run into the problem is the standard American diet. Okay, High fat and high carb metabolic gridlock. So the reason this metabolic gridlock occurs is because there's no efficiency one way or the other, right? It's just has multiple fuel sources that are almost super physiological. Like we're not designed to have high amounts of fat and carbs coming in at the same time. So when I get riled up, it's because science is getting mistaken. And if you look up peripheral insulin resistance, you'll see that it's a very normal thing. And even the rodent model research shows like real quick, like reversal, like they became glucose intolerant. Now, if we kind of come over to the sugar diet for just a second, if that's a route that you want to go, I encourage you to do it in short bursts. Okay. Because even though you can drop fat with it, even though there's mechanistic evidence as to how it works, one of the things that I just encourage you to really think about the most is that it's all about long-term exposure to something, right? With low carb and keto, we were talking about how do we marinate the cells in the right kind of fatty acids so that they ultimately condition the cell to change its uh, transport vehicles for different fuels. The same kind of thing is true with sugar. We're trying to like marinate the cells in sugar so they upregulate the transport mechanisms. The problem is that with sugar, we have glycation that occurs. We don't have that happening so much with fats. I mean, yes, it can. Okay, but with sugar, you're increasing the risk of advanced glycation in products significantly by consuming a whole lot of it. Okay, so when those sugars are coming in and then you're exposed to different proteins and different things like that, that's when you can run into an issue. So in my humble opinion, if one is going that direction, it needs to be something that's done in short term bursts, not for prolonged periods of time. So treat it almost as though a burst of fasting within like a normal diet, right? Or a normal high protein diet and then a couple days of that. So at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with people doing it. I have a problem with the misinterpretation of science. Low carb has, we just had the, the longest low carb study ever released. I talked about it on my channel, it was Dr. Andrew Kutnick's study. The longest every 10 year, okay? We're seeing improvements in metabolic markers across the board still, okay? We're seeing more and more, okay? The American Diabetes Association, like recognizing this, it's not causing this insulin resistance, okay? Where people are running into issues is a secondary effect that can be course corrected by having carbohydrates, but it doesn't need to be 
a thousand grams of sugar every day for a month, right? Periodic use case, experiment on your body, have fun with it. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.